In today's video, I'm going to share with you five incredibly effective tips to get your toddler to listen to you and to cooperate without needing to yell at them, to bribe them, or to use time out. These are tips that have made a huge difference for us. And so if that's something you're interested in, please keep watching. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome! My name is Soraya, I'm a mother of two and here on this channel I talk about everything related to motherhood, uh, children empowerment and social emotional learning and in today's video I'm going to share with you five very effective tips to get your toddler to listen to you and to cooperate and to do what you're asking them to do without needing to yell at them or bribe them or spank them or use time out. These are tips that I have been using for over a year now and that have made a huge difference in our lives and that have made things so much easier with my toddler. Now, it is important to remember that it is completely normal for toddlers to throw tantrums. It is completely normal for them to test your limits, um, to try and be more independent it's an age where they're starting to have really much more complex thoughts, but not yet fully able to articulate them. So this can lead to a lot of frustration. They haven't fully learned how to self-regulate yet. Um, and so it's very normal uh, and part of normal development for them to throw tantrums. Um, but there are ways that you can try and get them to do what you need them to do um, without having this intense confrontation, without yelling or without needing to use timeout or bribing, which is really harmful. Please don't use bribing because then you're teaching your child that um, in order for them to do something for you, you have to give them something in return. And this is really not a good lesson. Um, and this is not something that's going to work for them later in life, whether it is at school or anywhere out side of your home. And this video is part of a series and there's going to be another video this week about how to assert your authority without yelling. So today's video is really about getting your child to cooperate and Friday's video is going to be all about asserting your authority. So stay tuned for Friday's video. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so that you're made aware when that video comes live because I have some really, really good tips for you. Now, without further ado, let's get back to today's topic and my first tip for you in order to get your child to cooperate without yelling is to give them some notice ahead of time. So when your child is doing something, whether they're you know, doing some painting or playing with some toys or whether you're at the playground or at a play date, um, they're super focused on their activity, even though it may just look like playing to you. Um, to them, it's like, you know, it's like work. It's They're so focused. They're really concentrated on what they're doing. And so if you suddenly pull them out of that activity without warning, um, there's high chances that you're going to get a tantrum. Um, and it would be the same for you. You know, if you were doing a task and you were really super focused on what you were doing and all of a sudden somebody was like coming into the room and expecting you to just stop whatever you were doing, doing without any notice that would probably be a little bit frustrating for you and so it's the same for them so with my toddler I always give her a five minutes uh, notice and I tell her you know in five minutes you're going to have to stop what you're doing right now whether it's you know watching TV or, you know, whether we're at the playground and we're going to leave in five minutes. So I give her some notice and I make sure that she has heard me. So I will get down to her level. I will look at her in the eyes, make sure she's looking at me and she's actually listening to what I'm saying. And I'm telling her in five minutes, this activity is over. Okay. And we're going to move on to something else. And I make sure she says, okay, mommy. And she's heard me. Uh, and she knows that after five minutes, it's over. Now, it's really important that you stay true to your word and that you are consistent because if after these five minutes you give her another five minutes and then another five minutes, then all you're doing is teaching your child that your word has no value and that they don't really need to care about, you know, what you're saying. So yeah, mom is saying five minutes, but then she's going to add some more time. So it doesn't matter. And then you're going to end up with a tantrum. So it's really important to be consistent. Okay, so now on to tip number two. And tip number two is a tip that I have learned from an excellent parenting book, which I will link in the description box below. It's by uh, Faber and Maslisch. Um, and so it is to acknowledge your child's feeling and give them what they want in fantasy. 
So let me explain and give you some examples. Um, it really, really helps your child when they're going through these intense emotions to feel like they are being heard and like we are, we as adults are recognizing their emotions and validating how they feel. And if you think about it, it's really the same for all of us. I mean, you know, when you're feeling some intense frustration or sadness or anger and you're able to talk with a friend who tells you, oh, yes, that must be so hard for you. I really understand how you feel. I hear you. That makes us feel better instantly. And so it's the same for children. So the first step is to acknowledge their emotion, name their emotion and make them feel heard. And then the next step is to give them what they want in fantasy because then you are redirecting their attention to imagining this beautiful fantasy where they get everything that they want. So for example, let's say that my toddler is watching TV. She's normally not allowed to watch TV at all, uh, but during the last couple of months, during the lockdown, we have made a few exceptions to the rule. Um, and so every time it's the same, uh, I go to turn off the TV and she throws a massive tantrum. And she starts crying and she throws herself on the floor and I find it so annoying and all I want to do is shout at her this is why I never let you watch TV in the first place you're not gonna sit here all day like a mollusk uh, just in front of a screen like this uh, but instead it is so much more effective if I actually sit down remain calm and start by acknowledging and naming her feelings um, so I sit there and I tell her I can see that you're frustrated I understand that you would have liked to watch some more TV but right now we have to stop um, but why don't you tell me if you could watch TV right now what would you be watching what what would be your favorite show that you would want to watch right now Peppa Pig really but why who's your favorite character oh really yeah I love this character too and what's your favorite part in the story and then I redirect her attention to talking about the show and talking about the characters and within seconds she has completely forgotten about the TV because now we're talking about Peppa Pig and then let's go and play with your Peppa Pig uh, little plastic characters and then we move on to something else. Another example, let's say that my son who is one year old tore apart her drawing and she's really upset about it and she'll come to me and tell me Noah broke my drawing because this is how she would say it um, and at this point my first reflex would be to tell her it's okay Emma, it's just a drawing or it's okay Emma, just, just make another one. But when I tell her that, it's actually really upsetting and frustrating for her and it's hard for her to move on because, you know, her masterpiece has just been destroyed and so it's really upsetting for her. You know, it's exactly as if, you know, I don't know, I'm sure all of us have had this experience where we spent a lot of time working on something like writing a document and then there was some glitch on the computer and it was like the document disappeared and all of our work was lost. I mean, this happens with technology. Remember this feeling of frustration and it was completely, all your work was completely lost. So this is how she's feeling right now. And so me just making it seem like it's so unimportant is not helpful at all but instead it is much more effective if i sit down with her and say i can see that you're upset and i understand it was such a beautiful drawing and you spent a lot of time making it and you've made so much efforts and so i understand that you're so sad about it and upset and I really loved your drawing, you know, I would have really liked to hang it somewhere in the house. Tell me, Emma, where would we have hanged it? You know, if, if your drawing was still intact, where would we have put it? What do you think? Mm, would we have put it on the, on the fridge? Or would, it, would we have put it in your bedroom or in my bedroom? What do you think? On the fridge? Yeah, the fridge is really bare right now. It really needs a new drawing, doesn't it? Why don't we go and make one right now, a new one, so that we can put it on the fridge? And they move on. Tip number three, engage your child's cooperation without blaming or threatening them. 
So with my toddler, I find that if I ask her something by yelling at her or by calling her names or by threatening her, it really doesn't work. So let's say that my toddler has made a massive mess in her bedroom and I walk in there and I see the state of her room and I get so upset because of course I have spent the whole morning tidying up and cleaning the house and so seeing her room in this state really upsets me. And so my first instinct is to basically yell at her uh, and make her feel terrible for what she's done by saying things like, oh my God, look at the mess you've made. How can you make so much mess in such little time? This is so frustrating. I've spent so much time cleaning now, tidying up now. So when I do that, um, I usually, Emma usually throws herself on the floor crying, throws a massive tantrum and certainly doesn't want to tidy up and to do what I'm asking her to do. It is so much more effective if you are able to remain calm and to tell your child what you're expecting of them without yelling, without threatening them and without calling them names. Um, and, you know, sometimes a really effective way of doing that is by changing the mood completely. So, for example, with the mess situation, if I walk in there and I see a big mess, instead of getting so frustrated with Emma and shouting at her, uh, I could make it a game to tidy up. And as soon as you make it a game, toddlers are so interested, they really want to participate and they will cooperate a lot more. My next tip is to encourage cooperation by giving a choice. If you think about it, young children really live in a world of no, we're constantly saying no to them about everything and also there is very little room for choice in their life. We are constantly telling them what to do, when to do it, how to do it and so it can really feel for them like they have really no control over their life and they want to feel like they have some, they have some sort of control over what's happening to them, which is a very normal uh, feeling, which is something that we would certainly feel as well if we were in that situation and so by giving them a choice you are making them feel like they have some control over the situation and they have a little bit of power over what's happening and it's really helping with cooperation and of course you are not giving them the choice between um, doing what you want them to do and not doing it no, 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 you're giving them a choice between two ways of doing what you want them to do. Um, so for example, if you want them to get dressed to go to nursery in the morning, you're not going to give them a choice between getting dressed and not getting dressed. You're going to give them a choice between wearing this uh, piece of clothing and wearing that piece of clothing. Emma, are you going to wear a shirt and pants today or are you going to wear a dress? And so because she feels like she has a choice and she's getting to choose something and she has some power over the situation, she's not going to uh, confront me about getting dressed because she's focused on the choice that she's being given of choosing what she's about to wear. And my last and final tip is to consider saying yes. Like I said before, toddlers really live in a world of no. And so I find myself that sometimes I tend to say no, not because um, it would be dangerous, uh, but because simply uh, it would probably create a mess that I don't want to deal with. And so sometimes I tend to too easily say no. And when I really think about it, there's really no reason to prevent her from doing certain activities that she wants to. And so, Consider saying yes, you know, when your toddler wants to do something, you know, take a second to think to yourself, why not, you know, even if it's a messy activity, sometimes it's always also part of, you know, discovering and exploring and sure, you're going to have to clean up the mess afterwards, but first of all, this can also be something that you do with your toddler and get them involved in cleaning up the mess afterwards. Um, but also, at least your toddler gets a yes every now and then. So for example, Emma loves to play with uh, water in the kitchen sink and I am always tempted to say no to her because I know that she puts water everywhere even when I use an apron she gets her clothes soaked every single time and then there's water on the floor there's water all over and I just feel so tired and fed up of cleaning up sometimes but then when I think about it there's really no harm in her doing that actually it keeps her busy for like 45 minutes um so there are a lot of benefits to say yes as well and so this is my last tip for you consider saying yes 
So here are my five tips to get your toddler to cooperate and listen to you without needing to yell at them. Again, on Friday, I'm going to post another video about how to assert your authority without yelling. And I have a lot of very helpful tips for you as well. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day. Thank you.